thank you for joining. As you might know, yesterday during the regular parliamentary session, the opposition blocs of Pativ Unem and Hayastan Dashink raised the flag of Artsakh in parliament and announced that they will walk out and will go to the Artsakh border, to Artsakh and uh, border villages in Armenia. Upon entering the uh, Republic of Artsakh, they were uh, refused entry for the first time ever. With us right now is Aspram Karpeyan, who is one of the members of parliament, part of the Hayastan Dashink. She went to the Artsakh border. Uh, Vokhchuin Aspram, thank you for joining us. Vokhchuin Sepuhjan, uh, hi everyone, thanks for having me. Uh, could you please tell us uh, about the situation yesterday in parliament and what happened uh, at the border afterwards? Sure. As you uh, mentioned, we boycotted the sittings in the National Assembly, which was an organic continuation of the rally that we held on the 5th of April, which was about the unity and declaration of the red lines for the Armenian people and the Armenian statehood in general. And I really want to go and mention all those red, li red lines once again for the audience. We highlighted the fundamental principles and the, as I said, the principles which are red lines for the Armenian people and the Armenian statehood. First of all, we confirmed that the Republic of Armenia is has been and is the guarantor of the realization of self-determination of the Armenians in Artsakh and the guarantor of the security in general of Artsakh, we declared that there cannot be any status of Artsakh within Azerbaijan, uh, which means that, in other words, the right to self-determination, the external demonstration of the right to self-determination of the people of Artsakh uh, cannot ever be a bargaining chip. We excluded the enclave state of Artsakh without reliable land connection with Armenia. This is something that can never be accepted by the Armenian people, both in Armenia, in Artsakh and in diaspora. We affirm that we're going to take steps to resume the negotiation process in the format and goals set by the decision of the 1994 OSCE summit. We excluded the provision of corridors under the gaze of unblocking communication routes at the expense of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Armenia, which is very, very important because what is going on now is the Armenian people is being manipulated into believing that uh, this era of peace, which is in reality an era of destruction, can only be reached by the unblocking process of communication routes and etc. We excluded the signing of any interstate agreement and any delimitation and demarcation process in the condition of use and threat of use of force by Azerbaijan and or Turkey. We stated that Armenian people did not give a mandate to this collaborators to sign any agreement with Azerbaijan that would impede the exercise of Artsakh's right to, to self-determination without restrictions. We excluded any agreement. We expressed our strong commitment to exclude any agreement in Armenia-Turkey relations that will ever question the fact of the Armenian people's deprivation of their homeland and deny of the Armenian genocide, as well as the right of Armenians to be carriers of spiritual and cultural heritage. Those were the principles and the red lines that people in Armenia expressed during the rally on the 5th of April. So uh, our boycott was that organic continuation of this commitment that we took in the street um, on the 5th of April. The purpose of our visit, um, both to Artsakh and bordering villages in Armenia, was to, again, unite the Armenian people and to bring them together to make this process of resistance a vivid one for both in Armenia and 
outside Armenia. So when we reached the border, and I would like to, again, uh, highlight the situation that was uh, in the parliament after we announced that worrying situation that happened in the parliament, to say the least, uh, after we announced that we're boycotting and leaving Yerevan for Artsakh and bordering villages, that announcement was followed by very disgraceful speeches by the uh, ruling party members. And I think the audience who joined us today and who followed or watched the videos of those speeches saw the disgust that was triggered by the the mere symbolic act of raising the flag of Artsakh in the Armenian parliament. And I was, to say the least, I was, I wasn't actually shocked, but it was a confirmation of what we've been seeing and feeling all these months in the parliament. So after that, it was, again, very, at least for me, it was clear that they're going to do everything possible to restrict or to deprive us of the opportunity to visit Artsakh. So those were the thoughts that I was having during the trip. So we we left Yerevan right after the announcement and kept receiving all this troubling information coming from the parliament because we were following the session, what was going on in the parliament. So we were kind of anticipating that something will happen, but we would, I, I, I think no, none of us thought that we're going to be actually deprived of our right to visit our homeland. So we reached Avno uh, checkpoint and it was an unprecedented situation in the checkpoint in general. Uh, we were greeted by the heavy armory and the officers of the National Security Services were present, which was again unprecedented. They checked our documents very specifically and then let us move on to the next checkpoint cleared us to move on to the next checkpoint which was the checkpoint or which was the checkpoint controlled by the russian peacekeepers so we reached the checkpoint and we saw a list of paper in the hands of the peacekeepers and uh, with our names on 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 the list and we've been told that we're not allowed to cross the checkpoint they have been given an order not to let us enter Artsakh that's what basically happened what did they tell you at the border was it clear that uh, they had specific orders to not let this a uh, group of people in yes that's what we've been told that we're not allowed to enter Artsakh. But we, it was really unprecedented because my colleagues from the opposition bloc have been visiting Artsakh previously. I mean, they have visited Artsakh previously without any restrictions. And this was something that none of us thought is going to happen. But what they told us was that they have been given an order and they have been given this list with the names, but it was unclear at that point uh, who gave the list. You mentioned that you, during the trip, you were worried that the government would be inclined to deny entry to your colleagues and you, of course, uh, at the border. W what did the rest of your of your party members think? W what was their reaction? How uh, did everyone respond? Look, the the messages that we were getting from the parliament through those speeches were that we're going to undermine the peace situation or the security of the people in Artsakh or in any way provocate or cause provocation if we visit Artsakh, actually. So it was clear that, and I, I really want to give a context about the agenda that we had in Artsakh. We were going to have a parliamentary hearings in the parliament of Artsakh, and all the alliances of the National Assembly of Armenia were invited, including the ruling party, but they had declined 
the invitation. So it was the opposition bloc, the entire op- opposition bloc that, of course, agreed and was one of the initiators of this hearings in general. And all the five parliamentary fractions of the parliament of Artsakh were going to take part in this hearings. So we also had experts and opinion makers with us who were going to join the hearings and take part in those hearings. So the aim was to, again, as I said, the aim was to unite Armenians, both in Artsakh and Armenia, around the Armenian agenda and around the agenda that holds Artsakh as a priority. So whatever conclusion or decision this hearings would have concluded in, would have had created consensus minus one situation because everyone was involved in this process except from the ruling party in Armenia. So my my assumption was that and is is that um, they did everything possible to not allow us to have this very important hearings and to again uh, deprive us from the opportunity to unite Armenians around the Armenian agenda because that's what the collaborators do, right? <laughs> they are serving a different agenda which has nothing to do with the Armenian agenda and the vision of, of an eternal Armenia that we have. But after being physically denied, what steps did you take afterwards? What did you do the following hours? So we actually stayed in the checkpoint for almost four hours because, of course, we've been calling and we've been in contact with our colleagues in Artsakh. And it was really amazing that all the heads of the five parliamentary fractions of the Republic of Artsakh, they came and met us in the checkpoint after they heard the news. So we held a small meeting uh, right in the checkpoint because it was it was a surprise for them as well so they came they greeted us expressed their concern we had a as i said we had a short discussion with our colleagues and it was already dark outside so the decision was made to leave the checkpoint because we've been told once again that it is impossible that we're going to be let in I would like to take uh, the conversation back to the uh, greater uh, geopolitical uh, sphere here, because uh, obviously this is a direct continuation of the of the agreement between Pashinyan and Aliyev. Uh, as you know, uh, that Aliyev today claimed that Armenia agrees on the five points in which uh, Armenia supposedly recognizes the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. How much uh, is this true? And and uh, and if you could shed some light on whether it's actually enforceable. Uh, none of it is true. It's a complete manipulation of the facts and realities. Pashinyan demonstrated his failure and continuing criminal negligence. And this is a, a desperate attempt to hold on to his power, no matter the cost. So it's just how they envision keeping the power to sacrifice everything that's important for the Armenian statehood and Armenian people to make everything, every red line a bargaining chip and to serve the Turkish-Azerbaijani agenda. The mere purpose is to hold on to their power. So none of it is true, but it, it is clear that they have a direct connection with their brothers, as I call them, the Azerbaijani-Turkey alliance. And what they're doing is just serving the agenda and trying to manipulate the Armenian population. And that's the reality that we have, unfortunately. One important fact to to undermine the peacekeeping operation in Artsakh uh, in general as well. So what they did was to put the blame on the Russian peacekeepers. My take is that the lists that those peacekeepers had in their hands were given by those who wanted us to fail and wanted this very important hearings not to happen. As a member of the opposition, you 
uh, have a certain role to play in all of this. How do you explain, uh, as an elected opposition party member, how do you explain boycotting the parliament? Is this uh, the correct course of action? It is, if it serves the Armenian agenda and the agenda of the opposition is to to serve the idea of having eternal Armenia. That's my take and that's what I am committed to. Everything that's needed should be done, whether it's boycotting or staying in the streets for days or months. Everything that's needed to save Artsakh and Armenia should be done. There are no red lines for me personally in this fight because I guess we've reached a point where we can not take a step back at this point. This is the last checkpoint. This is the borderline. This is where the existence of Armenian statehood in general is being decided by every means possible. We should do everything possible to save Artsakh and to save Armenia and to get rid of this collaborators. Today the boycott continued with uh, only one representative being present in parliament, uh, if I'm correct. Uh, what are the next steps for the opposition? My colleague Christina, she was not in the parliament. She was in Yerevan, but not in the parliament. She was she was boycotting the uh, setting as well. But the situation that happened yesterday, and because she was physically in Yerevan, forced her to uh, go to the parliament and to make an announcement and to express the opposition's message, to uh, convey the opposition message. We're still in a boycott, and especially after what happened yesterday, I cannot say much at this point, but the boycott continues. I assure you the steps that the opposition bloc will take will be announced very soon. Thank you for your time, Aspramjan. Uh, as everyone knows and everyone can hear the developments the dynamics are um, are changing at, at very rapid paces uh, at a very rapid pace uh, thank you for for your time and uh, i thank the audience for joining in on this uh, quick session uh, of 301 bringing you the latest from the homelands and artach once again thank you osbram good evening everyone thank you so much for having me